change the series, but they haven't played in recent history, folks. Number eight for Maryland in the red is John Brothers in the white jersey for Syracuse. Toby Price, there are your colors, red and black, Maryland, white and blue. Syracuse not wearing their familiar orange. It's going to be a loose ball push against Syracuse, so Maryland will go on offense over the course of this game. Keep your eye on the face-off battle. It'll be Brothers for Maryland against Price for Syracuse. Possession's critical when you want to really slow the tempo down like Maryland does. They'll go to the hoop, no question about it. But they like to control the tempo. Big defense against young freshman attacking from Maryland. Now they get it out to the midfield. You'll see a lot originate from there. That's Nealon, their senior co-captain. Maryland's going to attack from the midfielders. They want to avoid Beardsley, Smith, and Schmidt, the close defense for Syracuse. Nealon comes in, almost gets a shot. Cummings applying defense, foul on Cummings. They'll get a free shot. Defense knocks it down. Good play by Chad Smith, 43. Came into the scene, took away the feed from Nealon. Nealon's tough to cover. He's kind of bulky. Number 15 from Maryland. He likes his right hand. Co Coach Roy Simmons in his 25th year here. Syracuse has only had three coaches in their entire coaching history. His father coached at Syracuse for 40 years. And Coach Dick Adele from Maryland looking for his first national championship. Maryland in the finals, first time since 1979. Andy Dell in the finals for the first time, period. He was in a soccer final, coach soccer at the University of Baltimore years ago before he went to Army, then to Maryland. Here is Maryland going into a rotation. They start with that heavy right-handed shot, and they get first blood. Bowen, number 12 with the right-handed rocket. Charles Bowen, and he can light it up. Watch the velocity behind this shot. He is a man-up specialist. This is the only role he plays for this Maryland team. He comes in off the bench during their extra man unit. Here he is. You give this kid this kind of time and room, and he is going to stick it. That time being Rogier over the near shoulder. This kid can light it up 90 miles an hour or, or better, all from the wrist. Syracuse with a lot of flash in offense. Maryland, maybe I think from the Final Four experience, the best opportunistic shooting. They don't take many bad shots. And they get the face off. Brothers comes up with it. Trying to get inside. They lose it for a moment. Here comes Syracuse. Transition play. Chad Smith looking. He'll take a shot if he gets a chance. Smith being double teamed. And the ball goes back down the turf. And the Turks turn it around. Great double team by Reese. Got a whistle after the play. It's going to be a push against Maryland. Smith had a teammate open. He had Price on the far side. They were working a five-on-four. Watch the double-teaming defense. You can see in the background, number 12 for Syracuse. He's wide open. Smith has got to give that up. That's the push right there by Evans. Maryland, a very scrappy team. They are not afraid to challenge the loose balls. Evans and Reese, the double-team. Syracuse gets it back. Let's see if Pavlovic is going to play here at Maryland. He's got possession. I try, try to beat Casey Power, Quint, right on the crease. Looking inside. Kavimitz, really the quarterback from behind the goal. He'll be covered by Elstrom, their ex-high school teammate. Matchups now showing themselves. Look at Syracuse trying to bring it right into the crease. And here comes Elstrom. Giving it up. Watch the fast break. Evans, he's got speed. He's got Whipple. Down to the big shot. Hahn. No. Hahn was wrapped up by Beardsley. Hesitated for a moment. So far, Maryland put in two pretty good shots. They connected with one. They still have possession. 1-0 so far, early in the, in the game. Maryland leads. Hahn has got a nose for the goal. 32 goals in his freshman season. And Whipple, the other attacker, number one for Maryland, the ACC Rookie of the Year. Both freshmen. Hahn's the only guy, went that didn't start all 14 games this year. Back door, Hahn can't put it through. It was a redirect. He just missed it. You know, there's been some rain this weekend. Quinn, how is the field? The field's slick, and, and we've seen players this weekend uh, have some problems with the Chomo on that last play, had some problems. Uh, it's okay around the cages, but when you get into the lower corners, the because of the crown of the field, the water drains generally towards the sidelines. It's a little more slick. So a lot of pressure on Rogier early on. Syracuse now brings it back. Here's Colton, everybody's candidate for player of the year. He is a stud at midfield. Left-handed shot. Big save by Dougherty for his first block. Dabovic gets control. Colsey again. Ospron tried to go across crease to Sullivan. Maryland knocks it down, but Syracuse gets possessed. Graham Nini with some nice stick work, deflecting that ball out of bounds. Dougherty with the first save. It's so crucial as a goaltender to get the first save. There it is. Nimi has his stick in the passing lane. That's one of the reasons why defensive players use that six-foot-long shaft. Dabovic controls behind now. Giving it out front, Syracuse working with 
very carefully. Marcy, Sher Syracuse showed uncommon patience in their semifinal game. Playing Virginia. Colsey, so hard to get the stick from him. Doesn't look big, but he plays huge. Ball knocked down, finally put on the surface by Nimi. Nimi, the young kid, played Colsey perfectly. Here comes Maryland, they can get the fast break going. Bonani. Back into the center of the field. Oh, the giving go by Chomo. He couldn't bring it, bring it back. Hans Schmidt, Beardsley, they're all there. Big hit by Nalen. That's the kind of Maryland hit that you can expect. You can see the hustle by Maryland. There were more red jerseys on that portion of the field than there were white. That is a signature. Take a look at the hits here. Physical style, Licamelli gets decked by Nealon. And here's Han. Han. Han will step on the line to Syracuse will control. Nealon, no stranger to physical play. He likes to scrap, very intense. And Dick Adele's team generally at Maryland play that style of lacrosse. He loves that style. He loves big hearted players. He wants you to go 100%, bring it to you physically. And he does get that effort out of his players. Chad Smith having a tough time on the far side. Transfer from Army now has control. This long stick unit, all All-Americans like to take it to the hoop. They can all score. And that's why you see the defenseman down there. They've got the green light also to go coast to coast. You know, a lot of teams, their coach, when the long stick brings the ball over, give it up, get back and play defense. This team, they've got the green light. They can go coast to coast, and they have, and they do with success. Quint, different look for Casey Powell, number 22, with the ball. Long socks here. He wore short socks in the semifinal, and he wore these long socks uh, earlier in the season. He has a different look, I guess, depending on his mood. That number 22 is a storied number in Syracuse lacrosse tradition. Gary Gate wore 22, and then Charlie Lockwood. Number 22 has been an All-American every year the last eight years. Goal! Shot by Cavalier, who comes around and just beats Doherty. He goes low on him. Nobody picked him up on the slide. We've got a 1-1 game. Well, coming in, you knew Cavett can feed, but he's also proved that he can dodge to the goal. Here he gets a step on Elfstrom, who's overplaying behind the goal, and Doherty comes off the inside pipe. That's a cardinal sin when you're a goaltender. You want to stay on that inside pipe, much like in hockey when a player sneaks from around the back. Being a left-hander, he probably feels a little cramped with the stick on that left-handed pipe. He came out to use it a little more. Ball goes right underneath him. Yeah, he slid his body well, but he didn't see the ball. He guessed. Brothers number eight facing off. He was huge in the game against Hopkins in the semifinal against one of the best, Jacobs. He nullified him, and here he's doing well in the second faceoff for Maryland. Jumbo looks immediately into the crease area. Maryland player going off is Brian Reese, long stick from the wing. Maryland will show patience offensively. Maryland actually three faceoffs, none for Syracuse so far. Maryland likes to set it up with their half-court offense. They like to attack the short sticks. They look for matchups. They specifically target a player on the other team to take to the goal. And this is a good matchup. Nealon against Toby Price. Toby Price will be facing off all day long. Maryland would like to wear him out. That's right. They want to keep him on the field as much as possible, take him behind the goal, make him play some defense. Toby Price, his teammate who faces off with him, Sitnor, had an injury in the semifinal, broke his wrist. He'll be out. Maryland with a rocket that Rozier pulls down. Great block. Shot by Kit Fox, picked up by Neal, he's such a heady player. Kit Fox has got a rocket from there. He likes to go behind. Into Ripple, can't get an angle. No angle for Ripple. He gets smothered by the great defense of Syracuse. Huey had no angle and still tried to put it back in the net. Nice body control by Whipple. He was running past the cage, managed to stop. Didn't get a shot off. Rozier played his angles perfectly, and the Syracuse defense converged on him. You can see how Maryland, offensively, they look to draw the double team and then move it to their open teammate. That time, it was very successful, although the angle shot uh, didn't have enough there to beat Rozier. Good back to it. That's a lot of the increase for Maryland. Now back to Casey Powell and company. Being shattered by Rada Ball, the best defenseman for Maryland. This is a key matchup today. Watch this one. 25 against 22. Rada Ball puts it on the ground. Doherty gets it in the stick, and Maryland comes up successful in this battle. If Powell's going to have success, he's got to use his quickness and speed. You're not going to dodge through Rada Ball. You're going to have to go around him. Hit Fox with a little bit of space. Watch him accelerate. Fox, number 13. He can shoot. And a great save by Rozier. Ball still loose, out in front. Maryland trying to get possession, and a push call here. With a loose ball. But a guess on Syracuse. 
goes back to Maryland. You can see the blinding speed of Kip Fultz there, getting the ground ball and accelerating past Roy Colsey, who's Split perhaps the best midfielder in the country. So that gives you an indication. 4-4-40 speed for Kip Fultz of Maryland. We're about halfway through the first quarter. The game tied at one. Maryland scored first for Kevin to answer for Syracuse. All the way to the back door for this one. Todd Evans can't. No, he finally pulls it down. Look at the great defensive work by Hans Schmidt. Schmidt gets helped defensively by Botopoulos, number 27. These loose balls are key. Let's see if Maryland starts second people. Syracuse really put three hits on Maryland. Mike Wittick's going to be called for the push here. Not a very smart play. That's a blatant pushing violation from behind. Maryland controls. Syracuse, though, Q, have shown that they are ready to make some contact, too. They are not backing down. Very physical team when they want to be. Oh, they will throw the lumber or titanium. These shafts are made of titanium. They are not afraid to play intense physical defense. Big check by Chad Smith. Took it right out of Whipple's stick. Whipple, the freshman. Smith, the veteran. Here comes Smith. He can shoot. He will. And a big block by Doherty. Now, Smith is caught down on this end of the field. He could be burned, but Syracuse gets possession. Half of it races it down. That's the running gun style that is so trademark reminiscent of the offense over the last 10 years for Syracuse. Anybody has the green light to go to the goal. Doherty looks sharp. That was a tough save, especially coming out of that long stick. It's often deceptive. The ball tends to come out at different angles, but he was up to the test. Marcy now. LaChapelle gets it to the front. Good cut by Mark Fietta. Number nine, watch him in the white jersey for Syracuse. Marcy now behind the cabinet. Never would like to be behind, controlling from there. Very heavy feeder. The young guys, the freshman came and really made an impact last year. And pushed around by Elston. This is Licamelli, four goals in the semifinals against Virginia. Nick Licamelli, player coming into that game, only had 12 on the season, career game. If Syracuse is going to have success, they need to have scoring from some of their complementary midfielders. La Chapelle with the check, penalty. Ball finally hits the grass, so Syracuse will go man up for the first time. Let's take a look at these two teams and how they stack up. Goals per game, Syracuse with a little advantage there. Shots per game, again, Syracuse with the advantage. Goals allowed, Maryland with the advantage. Face-offs even, an extra man. Look at the Syracuse, 46% on extra man. They'll have a, an opportunity right here to get their second goal on an extra man. Watch La Chapelle, he'll draw the foul here. It's a beautiful check. The, actually, the foul was prior to that check. That's called a back brain slap. Syracuse now got a high-powered offense that scores one out of every two chances on average. They go back to a 1-3-2 now in a rotation. Colsey sliding through, trying to draw the defense, sucking up into the middle. Working cabinet on the one side, around to Marcy. He's got him up top. They're going to want to have the left-hander shoot. But there's a right-handed shot and a goal. Well, the word was left-hander shoot for the left-handed goalie, but a beautiful shot and a goal by number 19. Carcaterra, Carcaterra, sophomore from Yorktown High School. He's an extra man specialist. We've seen Bullen score for Maryland. Well, Carcaterra plays the same role. He's just a tremendous shooter. He's got 13 goals on the season. Time and room, and you can see Doherty a little confused on this. There might have been a little screen here as the Maryland defenseman rushed out to cover Carcaterra. I think he used him as a screen. 14 on the season. That's his role. Carcaterra comes in off the bench, takes a couple shots every game, and that's what he's good at. He's got an outstanding shooting percent, 54% on the season. Just got a little bit better. Two to one, Syracuse leads. You can notice the Maryland defenseman that was in the hole on that ducking on that shot was so hard. Maybe had a chance to block it, but the velocity was so scary, he had to duck down. Here comes the faceoff. Dockery picks it right up. Beautiful job by Toby Price to get the faceoff. First one of the day for them, and then to take it down and threaten Dockery. In the semifinal game, Dave Signor, a midfielder for Syracuse, was injured. So Toby Price is not going to be spelled by any other teammates. He's better watch his energy. We've seen him on the field quite a bit. That could provide uh, an advantage, really, for Maryland in the late stages of the game. That's not the, the other problem with theirs. That's not the first man they've lost in that position. No, Jeff Schusler, actually, midseason, uh, tore his knee. Tore his knee up pretty good against Hobart. So they're without two of their top three faceoff specialists. Kip Fultz had the ball out front against Paul Sullivan, short stick. That's a good matchup, but he gives it up. Now, they're electing Syracuse is to go short stick on Neil and Fox. That is really a challenge. Shot in close off the iron. Wide open was Mike Crawford. 
Nalen gave it to him very quickly, and he was wide open on the wing. Nobody played him, and he redirects that one, hits the iron. Coach Adele substituting early for Marilyn Crawford, it, seeing some action. We'll see Hill Gartner, number 43, who had such a tremendous game in the semifinals, but there he is on the sideline with his offensive coordinator, Scott Marr. For Topless now, the long stick on Fox. So they put a long stick on Fox after the whistle. Maryland controlling, being very deliberate. DeAndrea now, the ball number 44. He's got a short stick against him. The matchup they want here is Nealon against Cummings. This is not the matchup right there with DeAndrea. DeAndrea doesn't have the speed to get, to get by with it. I now Chomo, the veteran. Beardsley, the best guy, takeaway man, working in. A big save. Rozier just gobbled it up. Here comes Hughes. Cummings. Against Falks, doesn't have a break, so Cummings goes off the field, fresh legs on. Cummings stays on, so does Neal, and they'll be a little bit tired. Let's see if they isolate defensively on them. Rozier plays such solid angle play. That time he took that one off the chest and then caught it. That's his best skill. Defenseman came in, Beardsley made like he was going out wide over the middle of the field as a defenseman. They couldn't see him. Now something to be open. There he is. Beardsley went down. They faked like the defenseman was going off. Neal and followed him to the sideline, and Beardsley just came right down the middle. Nobody was on him. Great play by Syracuse. He didn't get the goal. Great right ball. Takes it out of the freshman's hand. Number one defenseman against the number one attackman. Pro Maryland crowd, as you might expect. Loving the work of Radebaugh. Radebaugh getting the best of power right now. And he just skipped him. Twice now we've seen Radebaugh take the ball away from the freshman. Power has got to move as much as possible. He's standing still. He's giving Radebaugh the opportunity to throw his vast array of checks. On Schmidt against Crawford. Crawford tries to get in position to shoot. He's into the crease area. They get it right back to Rozier. And here comes Syracuse. Two to one lead. Three minutes left in the first quarter. Lee Felsmo, Quint Kessnick, Christy Lee's on the sideline. Division one final for NCAA lacrosse. Kavovic controls. Syracuse has shown a lot of dimension in these Final Four format against Virginia. They showed a very patient offense. Backer, he was an easy block. He didn't get possession. Watch out. Trouble. He's up by himself. He's got to get rid of it. And he's knocked out of bounds. He didn't really have any help. He elected to take it out. Doherty is very good out of the cage. Sometimes he makes poor decisions. That time he should have circled and tried to find a teammate. Uh, nice job by Syracuse there, taking the correct angle and forcing him out of bounds. Good check from behind by Maryland to get the ball back down the ground. That was Reese. Syracuse with great speed, picks it back up. Paul Sullivan, far side to Colsey. Penalty on the play. Syracuse can't believe it. It's going to be a something loose ball against Syracuse. Actually, the foul's going to be against Maryland. What Syracuse is angry about is that the whistle was blown exactly. Right. Licamelli scooped the ball up the uh, off the turf, and then the whistle was blown. Syracuse had a little transition going there. They had a fast break opportunity. Take a look at some of the coaching action going on. Coach Adele, tremendous job this year. Maryland came into the season ranked eighth. A lot of people think, thought that was an overranking, and yet they've surprised everyone this season. Solid all along, playing their best ball now in the playoffs. They were only seven and six last year. This year, a chance to win it all. Each team has had one opportunity on extra man. Each team has scored on that opportunity. This is the second chance for Syracuse. They lead by one. Back door, Marcy just misses an open target. And chased out of bounds by Maryland. They get possession. Brian Reese with great speed. Nice hustle by Reese. Doherty fortunate that Morrissey missed the cage. It's typical Syracuse man-up offense where they work one side, kick it to the back side where they've got a two-on-one. Morrissey does not miss many of those. He does not miss many of those from, from that angle. And offensively, that's a, a really a cardinal sin not to back up that shot, especially on man-up. You've got an advantage speed-wise. At least you know it's coming. You see it. You've got to get back there. Here comes Syracuse. Maryland having a tough time, Quint, getting the clear. They've got to really tighten up their clearing. Watch out. Inside Dockery with a huge block. Open shot right in his face by Cummings. But again, Syracuse gets it back. They've had a lot of minutes on offense. Teams at even strength. With it. Wittick's primarily a defensive specialist. He will stay on occasionally and play offense. He had a goal in the semifinals. Now he'll substitute out of the box. Again, another defensive player who has the green light to go to the cage if the opportunity arises. Well, Cole is on the field. He wanted the ball right away. Let's see what he does as he gets matched up against La Chapelle. 
Lachapelle sliding up the plate, Bolsey. Gets room, double team. Somebody's open on the back side. They move it up top. Hard shot from Fietta. They're giving Dougherty a lot of credit. They know he's good, so Quentin are shooting some real fine shots toward the outside of the goal. Yeah, they are being a little fine. Well, when you know you're playing against a solid goaltender, you tend to uh, aim for the pipes, aim for the corners. They don't want to give them any confidence. Cummings will control the ball, going against the short stick defense of Banani. Good check. Made that shot totally ineffective. Easy pickup for Doherty. Now here's where they've got to really tighten their game up. They have not cleared very well. Syracuse rides them hard, and more often than not, they've been losing possessions on these clear. Ball down again. It's going to kill Maryland if they can't get the ball in their attack zone. Flag down behind the play. Syracuse doing an excellent job riding the Maryland, Maryland clear. We haven't seen Maryland play offense in about the last three minutes. Take a look at the replay. That's a late hit right there, right in front of the official and the Syracuse bench. It's a one-minute violation. Not exactly what you want if you're a fan of Maryland lacrosse. You're down by a goal. You've played defense now for the last five minutes, and you have to kill off another penalty. And, of course, they shoot about 46% is their number, so that's one out of every two chances, and they've done just that. They've had two chances. They've scored once. They'll probably hold on to the ball because there's only nine seconds left in the quarter. If they hold the ball, it's not in the air, they will have possession when the second quarter starts. The physical play of Maryland at times pays off. They get a lot of ground balls, but at times it can, it can hurt, they hurt, they hurt themselves with some of those penalties. We'll see here in the second quarter. All right, two to one, Syracuse with a slim lead against the great defense of Maryland. When we come back, it'll be an extra man play as we start the second quarter. The state flag of Maryland flying high over Bird Stadium, the 25th anniversary season for NCAA lacrosse. And what a weekend it's been. Record crowds in the semifinals, maybe a record today. Look at the takeaway for Syracuse G. Fotopoulos challenging every inch of real estate, creates the turnover, and now Syracuse is into their up-tempo up transition game. This is Morrissey on the near side. This is Inside. a replay of earlier on. This is showing some great stop and great defense in transition. Exactly. Doherty making the save there for Maryland. He's got six saves. Now we're back to live act as we start the second quarter. This will be the third extra man opportunity for Syracuse. They're one for two coming into this one. Maryland controlling the tempo cue, but they're not going to win the game unless they get more minutes on the other end. Exactly. They're playing too much defense. Anytime you do that against the Syracuse squad, they're going to score a goal. Starting the 1 3 2. Powell now works himself behind. There's the ball to Powell. He pushes in to get the defensive attention. Rocket shot goes wide. That was the one that really hit last time. Carcaterra scored on that shot. Carcaterra is strictly a shooter. His high school stats in high school at Yorktown, he had 90 goals and four assists. So that gives you an indication he's not looking to feed, he's looking to stick the back of the goal. John Desco, assistant coach, said they'd be looking for the left handed shot. He was kidding us because the first two shots have been to the right handed side again.